is unto the Lord. Please, you may have brought your point of contact for your business, for your career. Drop it on this ground. Also, your expect list of expectation and desires. Please drop that on this ground. The same God that had kept you and made you to cross over to this second half will give you a winning testimony in the name of Jesus. God of heaven will establish you in peace in the name of Jesus. His favor will speak for you in the name of Jesus. He will establish your going in Jesus' mighty name. Now hear me. Whatever has been stopping you is being stopped now. Your business, your career will experience explosion in the name of Jesus. The God of this commission will establish you in Jesus' glorious name. Now for all the great testimonies of God's great acts in our lives that we had again this morning, for his preservation, for his answers to prayers, for his salvation of souls in our midst. Why not lift your hand and lift your voice? Let's appreciate him. For bringing us to this second half that we are winning half, give the Lord the glory due to him. Father, we bless you. We exalt you. We thank you for answers to our prayers. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. Be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' excellent name. In Jesus' glorious name. Please put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The word of God towards this month is financial fortune is my heritage in Christ. And today, by the special grace of God, we are starting a serious teaching that will run in all our services on Sundays, Gateways to Financial Fortune. So we'll be looking at part 1A in this first service, Gateways to Financial Fortune. Remember also today is a business breakthrough covenant day. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. The Bible says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God's desire, God's prayer for you and I is to have all sufficiency. Say with me, all sufficiency. He is the El Shaddai God. He is able to meet all your needs. And when you have all sufficiency, you will be able to abound to every good work. God of heaven will establish you, your endeavors in all sufficiency in Jesus' mighty name. But precious people of God understand this, that... A passionate pursuit of God and interest of his kingdom is key to a world of supernatural abundance. This abundance does not just fall on people. It takes a passionate pursuit of God and interest of his kingdom for us to enjoy a world of supernatural abundance. John 36 verse 11, Job 36 verse 11, he said, If they obey and serve him, they spend all their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Sometimes when people hear prosperity, they get bothered. Prosperity is all about all round awareness. All round awareness. Another word for prosperity is shalom, which is peace. All round peace. And I don't think there's any human being who doesn't want that. Even though some people pretend they don't want it, but they pray for it in the night. 
Everyone wants all round awareness. He said, if you obey and serve him, you will spend your days in all round awareness, in peace, and your years in pleasures. So it takes a passionate pursuit of God and interest of the kingdom for you to enjoy a world of spiritual abundance. It's a key. It's a key. There's a key for everything. There's a key for every door. The key used to open one door may not be able to open another door. So if it's supernatural abundance you desire, you must have a passion for God and the interest of his kingdom and pursue that. Number two, serving God and the interest of his kingdom with one's resources is a gateway to a world of financial fortune. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom with one's resources is gateway to a world of financial fortune. Remember I've said it here before. Any money you will not serve God, will you end up serving it. One of the ways to keep the love of money is to serve God with your money, with your resources. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. As you seek God, God seeks after you. But if you seek after God, it will fly away. So look for God. Look for God. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God is pleased when you prosper, which means he is displeased when you don't. Every father, every genuine mother, except is a witch or wizard, will always be glad when the children are doing well. Some of you, you may not have gone to school, but you are spending so much for your children to go to school. Why? You want them to do better than you. Everyone will want their children to be better than them. God wants you to be better. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be in head. As a matter of fact, that is his prayer point. If you read New King James Version of 3 John 2, <laughs> or the Amplified Version, he said, you know, God prays. He said, I pray. I pray above all things that you be in head and prosper, even as thy soul prospereth. I pray. So it is God's prayer point. God can't be praying for you to prosper and at the back be doing something for you to fall down. No. Just like you will never test your children with mosquito even when they misbehave. Will you send mosquito to go and punish your children because they broke legs? You will not do that. God is not that wicked. He wants you to prosper and be in head, even as thy soul prospereth. But it takes seeking for the kingdom of God and his righteousness for all these things to be added to you. Number three, it is pertinent to note here that God will only entrust true riches into the hands of those he can trust to use such word for the promotion of his kingdom on the earth. God will only entrust true riches into the hands of those that can, he can trust to use such word. For the promotion of his kingdom on the earth. Now, kingdom works. Kingdom prosperity is not an achievement. You don't say, yes, I've, I've achieved it. No, it's not an achievement. It is an entrustment. God entrusts you with it. If you are faithful in the righteous mammon, you are not faithful in the righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Luke 16, 11. So, it's how trustworthy you are with God that will determine how much of his words he makes available to you. I've told us here before, that there are some people now, if they see 10 million, they will never go to church again. They backslide full time. Marry 10 wives. One for one million. God will never give you that. That's why you pray and pray and pray and pray. He said, just take this 500,000. Just be managing it first. You pray again. Because he knows that if he empowers you, they will, they will lose you. So, it is you that determines what God places in your hand. There is nobody to envy. There is nobody to fight. It is you that determines what God puts in your hand. In your trust. If you are not faithful in the unrighteous mama, the little money, the godly, the, the money we use in the world today, if you are not faithful in handling it, how will God entrust the true riches where the blessing is? Because the blessing of God makes it and add no sorrow. God will never trust you with such. He will not put it in your hand. 
He wants to be sure you will use it for the promotion of his kingdom. Somebody may get it now. All he's looking for is to go to the village and oppress everybody. Some are looking for it to show people have arrived. If you are not going to use it for the promotion of his kingdom, he can't entrust you with it. So, it is you that will determine what happens to you. As a matter of fact, I've told us here, what you do with God determines what God does with you. He said, return to me, I will return to you. <laughs> so you determine what happens by your disposition. Glory to God. Can God trust you? If God, can God give you 100 million and your head is still, you know, you are normal. Some people now give them 1 million in their house, they can't sleep that night. Their temperature will rise. Can God trust you with 1 billion? It is you to build your capacity of trust with God. And then kingdom wealth will be released to you. Say with me I hear. It's important therefore to know that this kingdom wealth is entrusted to us through the covenant. It is the covenant that makes God to give us the power to make wealth. God cannot release his word to you except through the covenant. This <laughs> 8, 18. You shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that giveth the power to make wealth. Some translations say power to get. And I've told us here before, power to get is different from power to buy. Some have power to buy, others have power to get. Please look for the power to get. <laughs> it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth or to make wealth, that he may establish the covenant which he swore to thy fathers, even as it is this day. So every day you wake up and it's called this day. The covenant is still relevant. And the covenant is behind the power to make wealth. What is a covenant? In the lemma's definition, it is simply a binding obligation between two or more parties with attendant benefits and responsibilities. The binding obligation between two or more parties with attendant benefits and responsibilities. If you like, call it an alliance. Call it a league. Call it a pact. Call it a treaty. Call it a deed. And today you can see such happening in the world. For instance, you see the United States of America having you no know, a pact or alliance with United Kingdom and then Israel and other people. So whenever they are any what politics or they want to go into war or whatever, they join hands together because there is a covenant. Now, it's important that we understand it from scriptural perspective. In our context, and from scriptural perspective, it is a well-enacted deal. A no man now having a well-enacted deal with God, with obligations, responsibilities attached to it. So there's always a god war responsibility, there's a man war responsibility. If you do your own, God will always do his own. I used to tell us here that in the quadratic equation of life, God is a constant factor. Man is a variable factor. There is no variableness, neither shadow of turning in God. So, when you do your own side, God will certainly do his own side. So, there is what is expected of you to do, and there is what God is expected to do. Just in the, like in any other treaty. Now, the covenant is not a promise. God's servant was out there in you know, a three days prayer and fasting <laughs> and encountered what made him to shout I can never be poor and we are partakers of such today and God told him in that that God's prosperity plan is not a promise but it's a covenant 
until our part is played, God's integrity cannot be committed to perform. God's prosperity plan is not a promise, but a covenant. Until one, our part is played, God's integrity cannot be committed to perform. When you understand this, it's easy for you to prosper. So you keep doing your own. What you did yesterday brought you to what you are seeing today. What you are doing today will determine what happens tomorrow. So if you understand this, you can be sure of tomorrow how tomorrow will look like. Glory to God. Now, I said the covenant is different from a promise. What is the difference between a promise and a covenant? A promise is an oral or written agreement to do or not to do a thing. However, a covenant is a solemn and binding agreement. So it's a binding nature that makes it a covenant. Somebody can promise you something and fail. But a covenant you are bound to fulfill what you have said. Do you understand that? Deuteronomy 8, 18 where we say, say that shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that gave thee the power to make word or to get words that he may establish his covenant which is way unto his fathers unto thy fathers even as it is this day. God has made a covenant with our father Abraham and is committed to ensuring that that covenant is established. Now if you check it wasn't the properties of Abraham that made Isaac rich but it was a covenant Abraham had with God that God came to Isaac and said I'm going to establish it with you and this also happening today find out about the Jews all over the world today highly prosperous people and if the physical Jews can do that how much more you and I that spiritual Jews now hear this the covenant is anchored based on the force of seed time and harvest Genesis 8, 20 to 22, we saw Noah wearing an altar of sacrifice to God, sweet smelling savour, the Bible called it. And God began to say, I will no longer cause the earth for man's sake. The cause that was placed on the ground, God never caused Adam, but God caused the ground for Adam. That cause was lifted after Noah offered an offering. He said, I will no longer cause the ground for man's sake. But from now, <laughs> this is the order. If you like, understand it. If you like, don't understand it. God does not bless people generally now. God does not cause people generally now. God deals with us individually. See, time and harvest shall not cease. So what you do determines what God does with you. So this is the anchor of the covenant. See, time and harvest. See, time and harvest. Philippians 4, 15 to 19. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of my gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving. The same, seed time and harvest. Some think it's harvest, then give, you know, <laughs> harvest, then seed. No, it's seeds. You start from it. You sow a seed, you go and harvest. You can't go and harvest when you didn't plant anything. If you do that, you'll be a thief. So, giving and receiving. It's not receiving and giving. Some are waiting for when they receive before they give. No. It is giving and receiving. Now, you see, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica you sent once again unto me my necessity. Not because I deserve give, but I deserve fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound in all. I am and abound, I am poor, having received of a fabricators the things which we are sent from you, and all that sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, way pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Many a time, many of us claim this scripture. Philippians 4 19, my God shall supply all my needs. That prayer is not for everybody, it's for those who did 15 to 18. Check it. Paul was praying for those people who fulfilled 15 to 18. The Macedonian church is not the only church that, you know, that Paul uh, pastored. But why was he remembering them? Because of their giving. Because of their giving. It's a memorial. Any giving is a memorial. Glory to God. If you don't understand, I can give you a, a simple, I don't mean you give somebody clothes. Anytime the person wears the clothes, you remember who gave the clothes. Three of us. So your giving, both to God and to man, is a memorial. 
So the covenant of God also is tied to the ordinance of night and day and to the ordinance of heaven and earth. Jeremiah 33, 20 to 21, 25 to 26. Say this said, thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and the covenant of the night, that there should not be a day and night in their season, then shall also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and will deliver the priests my ministers. Thus said the Lord God, if your covenant be with, if my covenant be not with day and night, so the covenant is attached to the ordinance of day and night, to the ordinance of heaven and earth. What does that mean? If you understand this, this is one of the things Bishop Oyedepo understood that made him to say, I can never be poor. If you understand this, no witch, no wizard can stop your business. No witch, no wizard can stop your prospering. Sometimes you may have heard some of us saying that you think that the person is proud. No. It's understanding of the covenant. Because any day you wake up, you see the day in place. You see the night in place. You see heaven in place. You see the earth in place. It means the covenant is still working. And if the covenant is working, that is the force behind the power to make words. Which means the power to make what is still working for you. Are you getting me now? So if you understand this and you plug to it, no devil can stop you making progress or prospering. Please understand that the covenant is superior to every economic climate, every economic situation, every economic circumstance. The covenant is superior to every form of famine. Just no matter the economic hardship on the earth today, lockdown or no lockdown, just stay in the covenant. It is stronger than any economic climate, any economic situation. Glory to God. Look at this, Psalm 33, 18 to 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, and upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, and to keep them alive in famine. To keep them alive. It doesn't matter what is happening in the world. You will not suffer what others suffer. Both down or no lockdown, your business will not go down. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 37, 18 to 19. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Say with me, Amen. In the days of famine, when others are going hungry, when others are shouting, you say, this shall be satisfied, you'll have more than enough. If you say you don't understand this, check all our covenant fathers. If they experience famine. Every generation will experience a famine. We may be experiencing our own, but every generation will experience it. How did our covenant fathers survive it? They survived famine triumphantly. Check the scriptures. In Genesis 12 verse 10, there was a famine in the in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to surround there. For the famine was grievous in the land. It was a grievous famine. But look at the following chapter, chapter 13, verse 2. Abraham was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. In the midst of the famine, he became rich. As this coronavirus is raging the world today, lockdown or no lockdown, there are people who are becoming more rich now. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You'll be one of them. I decree therefore, famine or no famine, I command your business to prosper. I command the work of your hand to prosper. I command your endeavor to prosper. Just like our covenant fathers will become very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold in the name of Jesus. There was also famine in the time of Isaac. There was famine in the time of Jacob. In the time of Jacob, look at it. There was famine in Genesis 43 verse 1. The Bible said, and the farmer was saw in the land. But do you know what, what happened? Jacob had bags of money in his house. He had bank in his house. He sent them to go and buy, not to go and beg. The righteous beg, don't beg, they buy. He said, go and buy food. I heard there is food in Egypt. Go and buy. Verse 11. Go and buy. They had bags of money. Even when they went the first time, Joseph recognized they were their brothers and then returned the money. He said, return it back. We don't need this kind of words. Just like the brother that shared the testimony, I also want you to be very wise and, and uh, pay attention. See cancer. And it can also be a trap. Are you getting what I'm talking about? I'm not saying they are not a destiny helper. There are destiny helpers, but the sensitive also. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. God 
God of heaven will change your story. In the name of Jesus Christ. The covenant empowers believers to prevail in hard times. To prevail in hard times. It doesn't matter. Now listen to me. It doesn't matter what is happening in the world. Just plug yourself in the covenant. You will not be consumed. The earth is already burning like an oven. But you will not be burnt. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Read Malachi chapter 3 and 4. You understand what I'm talking about? He said, return to me. He said, how shall we return? He said, in your tithes and in your offerings. You are even cause with the cause. Shall a man rob God? Jesus said, shall a man rob church or shall a man? He said, how? He said, return in your tithes and your offerings. He said, pay your, you know, bring all your tithes into my storehouse, but stand. And prove me now. If I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing that the house not contain, and I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Uncle Devour is devouring many people. Don't allow him. Everyone pays this title, but it depends on where you pay your own. Some pay to the devil, to hospital, to mechanic, <laughs> but some pay correctly to God. If you read the same Malachi in chapter 4, he said the earth is only burning like an oven. But God will distinguish between them that serve him. And then that's how you know. He said, you, 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 you will hide you under the shadow of the wings of the Son of Righteousness. And you will go forth. You go, for, you go forward. Except my covenant be not with the ordinance of day and night. <laughs> that's when you will break my covenant with David and that of the Levites. So please understand that God will never leave you alone when you are in the covenant. Quickly, as we begin to round up, what are the covenant requirements for working in financial fortune? What are the covenant requirements? But you must know what is required. Number one is tithing and kingdom advancement sacrifices. Tithing and kingdom advancement sacrifices. Now look at it. Your tithing is simply 10% of your income, your earning. Every businessman, every businesswoman here, make sure also you, there's what you call corporate tithing. Let your business come under the corporate cover. Anybody can argue anything, but you can't argue against principles. Every law of God is universal. Anywhere you go, it works. I've told us here, circumstances can change, but principles don't change. Now hear this. In Malachi 3, 6 to 11, I shared earlier before. He said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. He said, But said ye, wherein shall we return? He said, Will a man rob God? Look at the word used here. Robbing is stronger than stealing. Find out. It's a legal, a stronger legal world than stealing. Shall a man rob God? He didn't say he robbed pastor, rob church. Because in heaven is the one that receives it. I used to ask people, if an armed robber who didn't repent before he died, will he ever enter heaven? Answer me. Eh? Will he enter heaven? They have but a God robber. Answer, where will the God robber enter from? Will a man rob God? And so my just talking here and there, what they don't understand. He said, Ye have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? He said, In tithes and in offering. So my robbing tithes. Now, what tithe does is that tithes open the heavens for you. I've told us here before, if you are farming and there is no rain, it doesn't matter what you plan there, you cannot produce. So tight is like that heaven that open for the rain to come. Why your offering is like this other seed you sow for you to germinate. <laughs> Anyone you are missing is the one troubling you. If the heaven is open, you are paying tight, 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 you are not giving offerings. And then, <laughs> and you know, offerings, there are different types. You, by now you should know many of them, you know. There is, uh, there is, first food, yeah, there is, uh, worship offering you give on Sundays like this that's given to the poor, given to your parents given to ministers of the gospel and all that given to the less privileged the other differences. in your farm you plant many things as you plant melon, you plant maize 
you plant uh, this one, pepper. <laughs> there are different seeds. Glory to God. Because it depends on what you want to harvest. You want to eat pepper, you go and harvest pepper. You want to eat okra, you go and harvest the same farm. Are you getting me now? But all of them will depend on the rain from heaven to germinate. The same way, there are different kinds of offerings. But the tithe open the heavens for you. I hope you are getting what I'm talking about. Now, if you have, you plant all those different seeds and there is no rain, will any of them germinate? Now, if you pay only tithe and the heaven open, and then to your farm, you didn't plant any seeds, what will you have there? Weeds throughout. Are you getting this? Go and understand farming. If you understand farming, you won't have problem with kingdom prosperity. He said, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be made in my house, and prove me now therewith. This is the only place God says you should prove him. Said the Lord of hosts, I will open to you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough for you to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Uncle Devour is stopped, so that he won't stop the work of your hand. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast out fruit before the time in the field. Say the Lord of hosts. Some people suffer near success syndrome. Is Uncle Devil? Misfortune, Uncle Devil. The money they should have used to pay tight, they use it to go and buy shoe. And as they put their leg, they say, Uncle Devil. In Haggai 1, 3 to 10, because talking about sacrifice, he said, Go, what are you? Consider your ways. Go and, why are you living in seed houses? Why will your house be better than the house of God? That's one of the things that made God to, to, to trust David. He said, David said, how can I be sleeping in a house? Did we see that? And the God of Israel living in tents. He said, I will not find, I will not put sleep in my eyes until I find a place for the God of Israel. God said, this is the man after my house. How will you be living in seed houses? And the house of God is anyhow. He said, consider your way. That's why you are ending in licking pockets. Look that, read that Haggai 1, 3 to 10. Consider your ways. Some people are left boring. You know where you are now. It's not where you're supposed to be. Because all your effort is not bringing anything. Listen to me. There is a God factor. You can't play with the God factor. When you begin to practice the covenant, God puts his hands on you. He blocks wastages. He blocks losses. And you begin to make progress. Some of us are due to build churches in our villages. What are you doing? Or to pay the pastors in your village. This mass is there. The mission adoption scheme. They are not participating. Be part of that. You don't need to wait. Even sometimes they call projects for projects in the, in the church. Some go and sleep. No, you don't even need to wait. You will be one asking God, what else can I do? And you see how God will bless you. Remember, it is all about God trusting you. If God can see your heart and can trust you, he will pump the thing to you. That's why most of the time, have you discovered, most of the people that have it, they don't look like it. The people who think they should have it, they don't have it. It's all about the heart. Apart from this, another way thing you to do to enjoy or to do in the covenant is giving to your parents. Giving to your parents. Ephesians 6, 1-2. Children, obey your parents in the law, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment we promise, that you may be well with you. <laughs> that is prosperity, that you may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. That is the only commandment we promise. Now, everyone here, please ensure that your parents are taken care of. Don't ever give to me if you can't give to your parents. Somebody say, hey, they are witch and wizard. Bring the money, I'll pray for you and anoint it. They won't do you anything. That your, you didn't have the choice. God never allowed you to make the choice of where to come from. If God should have asked you now, who should be your father? You would say Donald Trump. But now he just made you to come from one village there and say, this is your father, this is your mother. You can't change it. So before they die, make sure you take care of them very well. Before they die. Periodically allocate all these things. It's your question of the mind details. Please, each one has his own place. Create your budget around them. 
your tithe, your offering, create budget. It's not when you come to church and determine the offering you get. No, no, no. As of yesterday, I packaged my, all my offering for this average right here. It's not that uh, I'll be looking for the one that got rejected. No. It's because you don't have covenant sense. That's why you're doing it like that. Determine what to give per service and maintain it. That's a covenant. And you see how God will be lifting you. You'll be changing from level to level. I've told us here before. The first day I entered Winner Chapel, the offering I gave was five naira. It was with anger. Because Joshua didn't give me change. Unlike where I was coming from, we used to collect change. So I was like, I didn't know they give change here. <laughs> but with time, I understood. Today, I, I know what it is like. Glory to God. For service. Now, please, in the name of Jesus, don't tell me my parents are dead. If they are dead, look for somebody to, to be honoring. You can't enjoy honor in life if you don't honor your parents. And your parents can be also be spiritual parents and even your biological parents. Honor them. Somebody year to year, nothing goes from you to your parents. They do Father's Day, they do Mother's Day, nothing goes from you. They do Christmas, nothing. Easter, all oh, they, they do every month. I said, Mother of is supposed to be a monthly budget. Let something, if it's 500, if it's 200, if it's 1000, stop doing it. And you see how God is lifting you and is lifting you and changing. How can your father and your mother train you in school? After training you in school, you say they are witches and wizards. Haba, you are wicked. They didn't kill you when you were in their womb, in the, in the mother's womb, or when you were growing up. It's now that you are married, you have children, you now discover they are witches. Please take care of your parents. I know what my father tells me sometimes. He said, what you are doing for me, your children will do it for you. Please take those blessings. Now hear me. I may, I, let me add this. In Genesis 27, it was Jacob that brought the venison to Isaac. Isaac poured his heart out. When Esau came, he said, there's no blessing remaining. It is he that brings the venison that takes the blessing. Don't forget this all your life. There's a blessing of the heart. There's a blessing of the mouth. Isaac said the blessing is finished. If I tell you God bless you, and I say God bless you, there are two different things. You don't ever think that the same. There's one that's greeting. There's one that's a blessing. <laughs> are you getting what I'm talking about? So before your parents die, draw something from them. Before my grandfather died at 104, he, he, there's some prayer. You tell me, my son, you rule Nigeria. How much? How much is it that you get? He said you rule Nigeria. You build upstairs. You will. <laughs> My grandmother prayed a prayer for me that money cannot buy. The summary of the story, he, the summary of the prayer, he said, My son, you'll be established. Your children will be established. Your wife will be established. You see why nobody can kill me. Please, take care of your parents. Do you, do you understand that? Some of you, after this service, you need to leave the group that send something to them. May God give us understanding. The same clothes your father has been wearing since nineteen Elijah. He see wearing it. And you you are doing party and throwing and spoiling food at home. You say it doesn't matter. It matters. May God give us understanding. One of us here did something. He came here on Saturday. He blessed me. How much? Twenty thousand. I know the testimonies, the catalog of testimonies every day of the week. He said, Father, after you pour this blessing on me, look at what happened. He sent me a test. This is a covenant day of breakthrough. Just one or two things are add here and we'll continue in the second service. Now, your next level of breakthrough demand that you know better than you do now. Many of us are not experiencing business breakthrough because we don't know much. We don't know much. You can't operate beyond your knowledge base. How can you be doing a business you don't know so much about the business? Don't ever invest in whatever you don't know anything about. It's a way of throwing your work away. So please be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable. In the parable of the sower, he that received seed into the ground and prospered was then that had the world, they had understanding of it, they brought food 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. Your understanding per time will determine the result you get, even in the secular. When they write the exam, 
you will see people will pass according to their understanding. Some will blame the lecturer. The lecturer, I know they see the way they write, I know they see her. It doesn't matter. It's your understanding that determines the grade you got. All things remain in equal. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So please understand the business you're doing. Understand where you are. Understand. Look for more knowledge. Today, knowledge can be gotten. Anyway. So please get understanding. Job 34 verse 32. Job said, these are the two problems of many believers. Why do believers suffer? You can see that in Job 32 verse 34 verse 32. He said, that which I say not, think thou me. Ignorance is one of the reasons when people are suffering frustration. Business stagnation. Ignorance. Number two reason may be iniquity. The things I see not, see thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. So these are the two principal things that make believers to suffer. One is iniquity. One is ignorance. So please, if you want to prosper in this kingdom, be knowledgeable. And then, have the fear of God. No iniquity. Job 22, 21. To 25, make sure to understand that. He said, if you return to the, you will be built up. You put away iniquity from the tabernacle. Then you let go like God. <laughs> and the waters of brooks. And go like the waters of brooks. So please, you need that. Many a time we celebrate what we know at the expense of what we know not. What you know not is what has kept you at the same spot. So please, try to know. You can know more about that business, that career, and you will be. You know, what is words? Word making, I, I, I thought in, in advancement, I want word creation, word creation process. Word making is that you solving problems. If you are not knowledgeable enough to solve problems, nobody will put something in your hand. So solve problems of others, and then you will be getting words. And for you to solve problems, you need to be valuable. You need to know better than others. Glory to God. Also, it's important for us to know the covenant terms for business breakthrough. And one of them is to seek for the king, advancement of the kingdom of God. We have said that. Seek for the kingdom of God and the righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek for his kingdom first. For Peter to enjoy the breakthrough he enjoyed in Luke chapter 5, he gave the boat, his boat to Jesus for his crusade first. He sponsored the crusade of Jesus. And then Jesus came after and gave him a word that made him to bring a net breaking harvest. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Seek you for the kingdom of God and the righteousness and all these things will be added to you. The widow of Zerephah offered to Elijah first, Elijah first and then the baron of me should not, with no words, the cruise of oil did not fail. And he ate, she ate in abundance. He said, make for me first. So you must seek the kingdom of God first and then you prosper Jabal. Number two thing you need is to carry and possess breakthrough mentality. Say with me breakthrough mentality. Proverbs 23 verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The way you think will determine what you see. Don't be carrying grasshopper mentality. You know, they said we be no able. Before grasshoppers, they say we are, we are, we are, we are grasshoppers before them, they are giants. If you carry grasshopper mentality, you won't achieve much. Yes, you're permitted to start small, but you're not permitted to remain small. Please think big. Are you getting me now? Create big plans, big goals. Dream big. Your mentality will attract. Your mentality is like a magnet. It will attract the things you think. Whatever you can conceive, you cannot achieve. If the smallness is what you are conceiving, you will be small, uh, achieving smallness. So begin to think big. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't tell me who dash monkey banana. You are not a spiritual monkey. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 13 said, We can do what? All things through Christ that threatened us. I see that business becoming global. You may be one kiosk now, but very soon it will be a supermarket. You may be just services of few people now, very soon they are looking for you all over the world. So think global. Think global. Stop looking yourself as a local champion. You are not a local champion. Now hear me very soon, global figures will be rising from this assembly. Men and women of Reno will be arising from here in the name of Jesus. Great financial giant will be arising from here in the name of Jesus. Please, let something happen to your mind. Stop thinking small. Rise on your feet. 
We are going to pray right now. But before we do, I want to give opportunity to anyone here that's not born again. You know, God will only lead his sheep to a green pasture. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Many of the lack people suffer because God is not the one leading them. And God cannot lead the one that is not his sheep. God does not lead goats. Now, you want to say, Jesus, I want to be born again. I want to be a sheep of your pasture. Guide me, lead me, teach me to profit. Lead me the way to go. Now, pray this prayer with me. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer. Maybe you gave your life to Jesus someday. You are no more there. You too can also return to him. He will return to you. Pray this prayer of dedication. You are suffering from evil habits and you know that Jesus only can help you. Please put your hand on your chest also pray this prayer. Say this, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart you are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Father. To you be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Please pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. You pray that prayer with me. Wave that hand to Jesus. If you pray that prayer, God bless you. God bless you. Please come with your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with. Don't leave anything behind. Just walk to the front of the altar now. Come, 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 come the way you are. You are good for Jesus the way you are.